everybody, it's Nick from Explorers.life. I teach people how to build DIY campers, and in this video, I am going to teach you how to make the lights on a Victron Lynx distributor work when not paired with a Lynx shunt or Lynx BMS. Now, this video is episode number 25 in a series of videos where I teach you all of the basic electrical skills and concepts that you'll need to tackle the next electrical project in your camper. Now, we are currently halfway through a little mini series that's talking about the Victron Lynx distribution system. We've already talked about the fact that a the blown fuse indicator light on the Victron Lynx distributor doesn't work unless it's paired with the Victron Lynx shunt or the Lynx Smart BMS, which are both great products, but are relatively expensive if you don't need their specific functionality in your system. So I've got a $10 hack to get the lights to work. All we need to do is use a little converter to convert battery bank voltage down to five volts so that we can deliver positive five volts to pin one of this connector and a negative connection to pin four of this connector. So let's get started. Okay, here is the plan. We need to be able to deliver five volt power into this port right here. And so we're going to do that by cannibalizing the cable that came with the Lynx distributor. And we're going to be converting 12 volt power from the positive and negative bus bars here down through this 12 volt to five volt converter through this cable into that port. So let's start making this cable and get started. And if you have lost this cable that came with the Lynx distributor, this uh, connection is either an RJ9, RJ10, or RJ11, depending on what part in the world uh, you are in, apparently. All it is, is it's a four connector um, cable here that is about seven and a half millimeters wide. So that's the information I can give you from there. If you can't find this, any local hardware store will likely have it on hand. I'm going to go ahead and plug one side into this port right here. And I'm going to flip it over this way and measure until this notch right here in the Lynx distributor. I'm going to go ahead and cut this wire right there and strip it back a few inches. So taking the side that we just cut off, looking at the pins in this connector from left to right. Let's see if we can get up closer. Looking at these pins from left to right, we have pin one, pin two, pin three, and pin four. Pin one is our 12 volt connection and pin four is our ground connection. So as we strip that off, the yellow wire in this particular wire is going to be the 12 volt connection. And this black one is going to be our negative connection, positive and negative. These middle two wires, the green and the red, are going to be unused. So I can go ahead and cut those off. Now I can strip both of these back about a quarter inch. And now we want to connect this wire that we just cut up to our converter here. So this is our converter that we're going to be using to regulate the battery bank voltage of 12 volts in our case, down to five volts to feed to the uh, to this data port over on the side. The big connector on this side is the input and it will accept anywhere from six volts to 24 volts. And it will convert that down to five volts on this side here. So since this is five volts on this side, this is going to connect to the data connector and this side is going to get ring lugs and attached to the positive and negative bus bar here. I'm gonna cut this connector off, leaving as much wire as I possibly can because it's kind of cutting it close. Strip these wires back about a quarter inch. And then crimp some ring lugs onto the ends. just like that. And now I'm going to cut this connector off and connect it to this data cable here. Cut off the connector, strip these wires back about a half inch, proactively add some heat shrink up the data cable here. If you had one section that was two, three, maybe four inches long, that would be ideal, but I didn't, so we're making do. 
So now it's time to connect the converter to this data cable here. So I'm going to put my butt splice connectors onto both of these wires. And then put the wires from the converter to the data cable into the butt splice connectors as well. So remember that the uh, wire, the, the yellow wire is the positive wire and the black wire is the negative. And on the converter, red is positive and black is negative. Okay, now those are lined up, grab your heat gun. And these are solder seal uh, butt splice connectors, but if you have crimp uh, connectors, then you wanna crimp those down. So whatever method you have for those. And if you do need to heat shrink these, um, just keep it on a really low temperature because this, these wires are really fragile. And then let those cool down. Once those are nice and cooled, you can give them a tug to make sure everything's nice and snug there. And then slide that heat shrink that we put on earlier up just over the edge of that converter there. And shrink that into place. And then go ahead and heat shrink the ring lugs on the ends. Now let all that cool down. While I was waiting for that to cool down, I went ahead and connected battery cables, but these are not connected to the wire uh, battery just yet. So now this is all nice and cool. I can start to connect it up. I'm going to disconnect the hardware on each of these studs. Connect the positive wire, the red one, to the positive bus bar. And the negative wire, the black one, to the negative bus bar. Put the hardware back in place. Washer, lock washer, and nut. Now, if you were chaining a second Lynx distributor onto this side, both of these lugs would go on top of everything. Uh, nothing should ever be between the bus bar and the next bus bar of the next Lynx distributor over. Now I can connect the data cable into this port over here. Like so. And that would just sit in there just like that. Now I'm going to connect these battery cables to my battery. So we have positive and negative power coming through the positive and negative bus bars. And just moving this cable out of the way, we can see that we have power. And I'm actually going to turn the lights down so we can see that a little better. So now you can see all of the lights on this chipboard are on. Uh, they're red at the moment. And you can see that when we put the cover on, all the lights are showing up on the outside. Fuse one, fuse two, fuse three, fuse three, and overall power. Now these will be red if any of these fuses are blown. And this power light will be red if any of these fuses are blown. So let's show you how that works. So if I put a fuse in position number one, that light goes out. If I put a fuse in position number two, the light for position number two goes out. Same with number three and same with number four. And these would obviously be screwed down. We have a loose connection there now, but they're all on there now. And this center light has turned to green, which means that there is no problem with any of these fuses. And if I remove one of the fuses, this is going to turn red. And then this one's gonna light up and tell me, hey, we have a problem at fuse position number four. And so that's how it's gonna look whenever it's functioning, functioning normally. And now we have functioning lights on a Victron Lynx distributor whenever we are not paired with the Victron Lynx shunt or the Victron Lynx Smart BMS. And there you go, a $10 hack to get the blown fuse indicator lights on the Lynx distributor to light up if you aren't using a Lynx shunt or a Lynx Smart BMS in your system. Now, in next week's video, I'm going to be doing an apples to apples cost comparison between the Lynx distributor and a more traditional bus bar setup. I think a lot of you will be surprised with how much less expensive the Lynx distributor is, all things considered, than a more traditional bus bar setup. Now, I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, it'd be awesome if you would share it with somebody or a group who you think could use it. 
hit the like button and leave any questions you've got or new things you learned in the comment section below. Subscribe if you want to see more DIY camper building tutorials and I will see you in the next video.